Hey, I'm Allie, and in this video tutorial, you're gonna learn how to make a cool glitch transition in Premiere Pro. We're gonna use this wider shot of the city and create this kind of quick, dreamy glitch effect moving into the next shot of the woman walking. As a video editor, it's really good to know multiple ways of doing things, and Will teaches how to work with a glitch effect in the video I'm gonna link in the description below. I highly recommend you check that as well, so you have a few different options when you wanna work with the glitch effect or or create a glitch transition. First thing we're gonna do is pop on over to our project window, go to new item, select adjustment layer, and drag that adjustment layer onto the V2 track above both of your clips. Drag the duration of it out a little bit and put it sort of in the center of where one clip ends and the next clip begins. Next, let's pop over to effects and type in wave warp. There it is in our video effects distort folder. Let's drag that onto our adjustment layer. As you can see, this is a heavier effect. I like to keep my playback in my program monitor at half instead of full. Depending on how fast or slow your computer is, maybe you can keep playback at full when you're working with this effect, or maybe you wanna bring it down to a quarter or even an eighth, up to you. Cool, so right off the bat, you can see without even adjusting any of the parameters, we have this wave effect. Let's just play it through and the effect creates a wave movement as it plays through. Making sure the adjustment layer is selected, let's go over to effect controls and check out some of our options here. We have wave type and we could set it to a bunch of different things. Usually I use noise or I like to use, and in this case we'll use square. So select square and you can see that that's created kind of like this tile square look over our footage. Let's adjust the height to 125. I'll bring the wave width way up to 240 and you can see this tile look and play this back for a second. So that's what it's looking like so far. If we were to change the speed, let's change it from one to five. It makes the wave effect move even faster. I'm gonna reset that parameter because I like the wave speed to be around one. And if you wanna get rid of the empty space showing up behind your clip here, click on the pinning drop down menu and select all edges. And that fixes that. To create the look we're going for, we're gonna bring the wave width down really low. Let's try five. And yeah, even though it's looking pretty cool with the lines going vertically, let's see how it looks if they were to go horizontally. So where it says direction, type in 180. Okay, let's bring our cursor right to where the first clip ends and the second one begins and use our left key on our keyboard to go over one, two, three, four, five frames to the left and press C on your keyboard to cut that clip. Okay, let's also move the adjustment layer up onto the V3 track. Select that part of the clip you cut, hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard, drag up and you've got a duplicate of that clip now. We're gonna do the same thing with the next clip. So with your cursor at the beginning of the next clip, move over to the right, five frames, one, two, three, four, five, cut. Hit V on your keyboard to choose the selection tool. Click on that part of the clip, hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and drag up to make a duplicate. Okay, now select the duplicate of the first clip and in effect controls where it says opacity, blend mode, click the drop down menu and let's choose screen. And I'm gonna just drag this part of the clip over onto the clip of the woman for a second. So you can kind of check out what screen's doing. So when you use screen as your blend mode, it makes your clip transparent and a little bit brighter. Okay, let's bring that part of the clip back to where it was before. We're gonna do the same thing to the duplicate of the woman. So click the blend mode drop down menu and choose screen again. Okay. I'm gonna turn the adjustment layer with the effect on it off for a second by clicking on the eyeball in the V3 track because my computer's lagging just a little bit. And the next part of this transition that we're gonna work on is making the first clip here zoom into the next clip. So select that duplicate clip in effect controls under motion, click the toggle animation beside position and scale so that we're making keyframes to hold the position of that part of the clip in place and go to the end of that clip, make sure it's selected scale 120. Okay, I'm also gonna adjust the position Y axis by dragging it downward. So around 1250 works. Okay, so now we have this clip zooming inward. And when we go over to the next duplicate clip with our cursor at the beginning of it, we'll reverse what we just did. So we will click scale and position toggle and make our scale 120. 
bring our y-axis position to around 1250 again and we'll go to the end of that duplicate clip and when we do that we can just click on these reset parameters arrows which will bring the scale and position back to its default position this is what we're working with so far Let's make our adjustment layer the same duration as the two duplicate clips, turn it back on, and check it out. Okay, that's looking really good. And we're almost done, but no glitch transition is complete without a glitchy sound effect. So I'm gonna hop over to my project window, and I've linked in the description below the stock footage site where I get all my sound effects from. Definitely check it out. I grabbed a glitch sound effect, which I will drag onto the audio tracks. We'll just move this up here. And I also found a whoosh sound effect. So we're gonna use both here. Just gonna move that up. Let's listen to both of these sound effects for a second. I'll just solo my audio track. Okay, and we'll solo the whoosh. Okay, I'm gonna press C on my keyboard and cut the excess part of the glitch sound effect. Move it over. Okay, let's trim it with my whoosh sound effect. I'm gonna press R on my keyboard, which is the shortcut command for the rate stretch tool and drag that whoosh in a lot so that it happens a lot faster. Cool, move that under the glitch sound. So depending on the glitch and whoosh sound effects that you decide to work with with your clip, you'll wanna move them around with your transition accordingly and see what works and what doesn't. Okay, and let's have a listen to check this out. <laughs> Awesome, so that's how you create a glitch transition in Premiere Pro, and I love hearing from you. So let me know in the comments below what kind of project you wanna use a glitch transition on. Are you working on like a YouTube video, a commercial, an Instagram story? Comments really help our channel grow, and they let us know that you're watching and you like what you're learning. So even if you just wanna say hi, say hi, and we'll say hi back. And yeah, thank you in advance. If you wanna learn more about Premiere Pro, cool effects, how to use it, all that sort of good stuff, then I highly recommend you check out our Premiere Pro playlist. We have tons of tutorials on there. And if you're into filmmaking, then subscribe to our channel because we release weekly videos all about how to be a better filmmaker and gear reviews. Thanks for checking this video out and we'll see you in another one.